Hello, I'm Justin Carlin, oculoplastic surgeon, and I'm here today at the Appearance Center in Newport Beach answering your questions about oculoplastic surgery. What is skin pinch surgery? Skin pinch surgery is oftentimes combined with lower eyelid surgery, where patients who have a bit of extra skin, causing wrinkling of the lower eyelids, will undergo a small removal of skin. Now, the key here on skin pinch surgery is to remove just skin with only a minimal amount of muscle. Damaging the lower eyelid muscle can lead to complications of surgery, such as lower eyelid retraction or a change in the shape of the eyes. So, us oculoplastic surgeons will carefully remove just the right amount of skin without touching the muscle to be able to smooth out the appearance of the lower eyelids without creating a change in the shape of the eyes. What is the recovery time for an upper blepharoplasty? It depends. That depends on the patient's age, their general medical status, and the extent of blepharoplasty needed. So patients who are younger tend to have a bit shorter recovery times. Patients who need less sculpting of the upper eyelid complex often will have shorter recovery times. And patients who are healthy will have shorter recovery times. Also, it should be noted that the recovery time is a really key moment for patients to take a moment for themselves, really relax. Relax, man. Hey, mellow out, man. Allow the body to heal. So it's important to keep up good nutrition. And I believe it's important for patients to get back to their activities of daily living after surgery. And when the body feels normal, it heals more quickly. Now that doesn't mean you should jump back into vigorous exercise right after surgery. However, walking the dog with hat and sunglasses on, of course, or walking around the house, going to the store, shopping. Get in, loser, we're going shopping. All of those can be done in this even several days after an upper blepharoplasty without any worry of damaging the surgery and compromising the results. So patients in my practice are counseled that they ought to get back to normal life as soon as possible after an upper blepharoplasty and that may actually speed recovery time. What about filler for the under eye hollowness? Is it effective? Is it safe? My answer to that is in the right patient Filler can be both safe and effective. And in the right amounts, filler can be both safe and effective. An equal amount of blueberries in each muffin. Do you know how long that's going to take? Certain patients who have under eye hollows without a large degree of herniation or moving forward of that eyelid fat, a patient with an under eye hollow and good skin quality can benefit from a small amount of filler injection into that orbital rim hollow. The filler needs to be placed in the correct location and in the correct amounts, meaning you don't need a lot of filler and it needs to be placed nice and deep below the muscle. If it's placed in the correct region, in the correct amounts and in the right patient, filler can certainly help to improve the look of under eye hollowness. Do I need to undergo general anesthesia in order to get a blepharoplasty? The answer is sometimes. Lower blepharoplasty, oftentimes sedation or general anesthesia are recommended. Whereas with upper blepharoplasty, sedation or local anesthesia only is recommended. For patients who are undergoing lower blepharoplasty, where fat injection will take place, sculpting of the lower eyelid fat as well as sculpting of the skin, Oftentimes, general anesthesia is recommended to be able to allow for the surgeon to control in a, both a painless way for the patient, as well as in a calm environment for the surgical staff to allow sculpting of that upper eyelid tissue with an eye toward what the final result is gonna be. Now, does every patient have to get general anesthesia? No. Many patients elect to undergo sedation or gentle sleep where they are given sedative medicines that will decrease their consciousness but allow them to continue to breathe on their own without requiring a breathing tube. And in that case, patients oftentimes have a very comfortable experience and will have a bit faster of a recovery time. With 
sedation, a lower dose of anesthetic is given, so the body clears it out a bit faster. With general anesthesia, a higher dose of anesthetic is given, so that does take a little longer for recovery to take place. So not all blepharoplasties require IV anesthetic to be given at all. Upper blepharoplasties oftentimes can be performed with a local anesthetic alone. Patients can come to the office and actually have it done in our clinical procedure room. Some patients will elect to have their upper blepharoplasties under sedation with local anesthetic injection, but many patients don't need to go to that extent. Upper blepharoplasty can be performed very comfortably for the patient under local anesthesia alone. Thanks for watching. If you are interested in learning more, you can reach out to me and book a consultation at the Appearance Center in Newport Beach or check out my Instagram at Justin Carlin, MD.